Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, welcome. This is Dr. Jacobs. In this video, I'm going to go over how to stop patella tendonitis pain. But before we do that, we need to understand the symptoms, the causes, and risk factors for patella tendonitis that will help us to know what we should do to stop patella tendonitis pain. So first, it technically should be called ligament because it's the ligament that attach between the in the knee and the patella here. So, but it's a common name is the patella tendonitis. So we're gonna call it patella tendonitis. Uh, so by definition, itis is inflammation. So it's inflammation in the tendon area. And you can see it here in this image, inflammation here. And it's not only inflammation, I will show you in the healing cycle, what else going on here. And you can see actually there's a scarring in this area. So usually patient experience dull pain with movement and tenders, tenderness. So the symptoms, a lot of people will experience uh, like kneecap pain or in the chin area that uh, they experience pain with the squatting or running or jumping. Uh, also knee stiffness, especially with extension. So this is the knee model here I can show you. So uh, in the front, you can see the patella tendon is attached from here to the patella. And this is a side view. You see the patella here. So what happened is this area is inflamed and build a lot of scar tissue. So when you flex your knee, that's a stretch to that area. And extension causes more stress on this tendon area that's inflamed. And with uh, squatting or running or jumping, that put a lot of stress on this area and stimulate the pain or actually that was one of the cause of the pain or the trigger. So stiffness in the knee, uh, pain interfere with the uh, sports activity, also stairs climbing and squatting. So the causes and risk factors, uh, it's very common to have it with certain sports like running, jumping, dancing, um, etc. Anything that requires a lot of squatting, jumping, uh, running. And one of the causes that's very common is uh, muscular imbalance or tightness in the leg muscles. So when we look back here to this model, um, we usually have the IT band from outside and it's very common to have a IT band tightness and or sometimes a hamstring tightness in the back and when that happened it put more stress on the quad in the front so it's uh, exerting more force here to compensate for the tightness in the opposite side and it pull more on the tendon here or a ligament here and that cause inflammation and uh, tightness, uh, pain. Um, it's also common where someone might have uh, lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or diabetes. That's usually their body heals very slowly and also have a joint issue throughout the body. So what should we do to treat uh, patella tendonitis? Before I answer this question, we really need to understand the normal healing cycle because if we understand the healing cycle, it will be very easy to treat it to get to the root cause of the problem and address the body from the dysfunction in relationship to the healing cycle. So I'm going to use external paper cut here for visualization, but the same process happened in the uh, uh, patella area, patella tendon area. So the first stage in inflammation, you can see it here in this image, swelling, redness, the blood start to rush to that area. Second stage is a proliferation stage, which when your body starts to build the scar tissue, fascia restriction, muscle spasm, trigger points. And when we look at the picture here, you actually can see the inflammation, the redness here, and those like little like dark spots, those are actually scar tissue. So with patella tendonitis, there's excessive inflammation and scar tissue in that area. 
and when that happens, you lose some of elasticity of the tendon. So it's uh, that scar tissue in the way and cause uh, cause a lot of irritation, especially when it is stressed with activities. So perfect scenario, your body should get rid of the scar tissue, the fascia restriction by itself, and clear it up. That could take days, weeks, months, or years. As we get older, this process the de speed decreases significantly. But if you have a lot of repetitive motion or sports activity that you're not <coughs> Excuse me. You're not giving uh, giving it enough time to heal. Your body gonna go back and forth between inflammation and proliferation. That's a vicious cycle. So to really treat the source of the problem, we need to address the inflammation. We need to address the proliferation and the causes of muscular imbalance and tightness that's around the knee muscles. Okay. So before we do that, just uh, I'm going to go over some of the common treatment that currently used, but it's not very effective, so you don't have to waste your time on those treatments. And we'll understand the relationship between this treatment to the healing cycle, so it will make sense if the treatment is uh, uh, addressing the source of the problem or just uh, kind of like uh, masking the symptoms. So the first thing here is ice and heat. That's temporarily pain relief or temporarily decreasing the inflammation, ice especially. And when we look at the healing cycle here, it does not do much to the scar tissue, does not have a long-term effect for inflammation, so it's temporarily pain relief. The other thing is electric stimulation that's used for pain to decrease pain temporarily, as we see here in the healing cycle, does not really address anything to uh, resolve the issue. The other thing is foam roller. It's very commonly used and massage. <coughs> the problem with these is are based on the study. It does it provide temporary pain relief? Does not provide long term pain relief. The other issue with those modalities that it if you have inflammation and you rub over that inflamed area, it's gonna inflame it more, and you're gonna be in that vicious cycle of excessive inflammation and uh, excessive scar tissue because that's a second stage of healing. Um, and uh, when I go over the fascia system, it will make a lot of sense why the foam roller and the massage are not effective as for the treatment because we, when we look at the anatomy of the fascia system and the scar tissue, it's really hard to go deep enough with the hand if you do massage with the knuckle, with the elbow, to uh, release deep adhesion or deep scar tissue. The foam roller is the same thing. It's just rubbing over the uh, superficial tissue, so it does not have much physiological effect to, uh, to the deep tissue, uh, which is usually the common cause of uh, the issue. So the other thing is stretching, and I personally do not recommend it for my patient, and I have another video on why you should not stretch. So think about it this way. If you have irritation in the tendon, like here, and you have inflammation, if you stretch, so think about it this way. If you have a tear in the tendon or inflammation and you keep stretch it, you're going to inflame it more, you're going to tear it more. So, uh, and study shows actually inflammation uh, could cause, in, uh, uh, stretching could cause inflammation, which is actually, uh, put you back to the heel, to the vicious uh, chronic condition of inflammation and proliferation. Uh, there's other alternative uh, safe options than the stretches that I will go over that we should implement instead of doing something that possibly could cause more harm. Uh, strengthening exercises, we need to introduce that, but we need to, int to introduce it in the right time because if it's inflamed, that's gonna inflame it more. Okay, so what should we do at home to really get, uh, 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 to address the healing cycle from both ends? So I divide the treatment based on inflammation and proliferation because those are the issue usually with the patella tendonitis. 
So what you should do for the inflammation stage, for the patella tendinitis? So first thing, if you uh, have acute issue, you should rest for at least like seven days, five to seven days. Avoid the activity that actually cause more pain, like jumping, like running, like squatting. And uh, in acute stage, that should be good enough to um, not make it worse and uh, relieve the minor inflammation. But if you have moderate to mod uh, moderate to severe inflammation, we have to be aggressively address those inflammation. So what I personally do is uh, I give my patient the Magnahil one, Magnahil two, and this is uh, it has a strap and it's very strong magnet. Uh, the magnetic range about three inches. So that's what I have patient wear it. Uh, throughout the day or at night to decrease inflammation. If they have uh, moderate to severe inflammation, we also I put them on the anti-inflammatory diet to make sure they're not eating inflammatory food. So one of the things that's overlooked but by a lot of healthcare providers is vitamins, mineral, hormonal imbalance could uh, slow down the healing process. It doesn't matter what kind of injury you have. So in order for you to know what kind of deficiency you might have that inhibit or prevent your body from healing, take advantage of Ask Aster. It's askaster.com. It's a free online medical evaluation that takes about five minutes and it has a database of nine healthcare providers. So the software will guide you through the process to understand do you have any deficiency, what kind of deficiency you might have. And that's very common for chronic condition that actually the body is very slow to heal. So the other thing we have to address simultaneously is working on the proliferation stage. So if you are in chronic condition, you're probably going back and forth between inflammation and proliferation, like in this image here. And you can see it actually in the patella tendonitis here that uh, you see the redness, that's the inflammation, and you will see a scarring here. So we have to break that scarring. In order to do that, we have to work on all aspects of the proliferation stage, fibrosis, fascia restriction, muscle spasm, and trigger points. So what I personally do is I use the A3 to work on the superficial scar tissue to break it down. Then I use the A5 to really work on deep scar tissue, trigger points, and deep fascia restrictions. So we address two issues of the proliferation with those two tools. The other thing I want to cover it briefly is the fascia system because extremely overlooked and it's very common to have fascia issue with patella tendonitis. I, I'll briefly go over the system here to uh, hopefully to make you appreciate how significant that system uh, in relationship to your pain or uh, decreasing your function. So the fascia system, the first layer, the superficial layer, it's like a wrap surrounding the entire body. It's like a Spider-Man suit. So you can see it here in this image, the, the white tissue here, that's the fascia layer. So the fascia system is divided to two categories, superficial and deep fascia. And the deep fascia layer is divided to four subcategories. And this fascia system is extremely complex system. And I'm, I'm going over this to make you appreciate how important we have to address the system. That's why massage and uh, foam roller does not work because they're not going to go deep enough for the fascia layer. We'll see it here. The first layer of the deep fascia layer is aparatic fascia. Aparatic fascia is a fascia layer that trapping a group of muscles. Then we have the epimycin, and you can see it here. That's the epimycin layer that trapping each individual muscle, the whole muscle uh, wrapped with the epimycin. And then we have the premycin and wrap individual group of fibers. That's a premycin wrapping a group of fibers and then each individual fiber is wrapped with the endomyosin layer. To make it more complicated, each of these layers is actually have 
uh, two to three sub layers so the aparatic fascia has two to three layers on the top of each other the epimycin is the same and anytime you will have fascia restriction it's like you're wearing a t-shirt two to three size too small and it's actually compressed on the tissue really very tight it feels like um, a band or a, a rope or just uh, something really compressing hard on the tissue but the treatment very simple uh, so what I personally use is I use the A1 and I use that to release the superficial fascia layer and the apparatic fascia layer and I use the A5 to release the epimycin, premycin and endomycin and that's why massage is not uh, working very well for the releasing the fascia or foam roller because it's impossible with the knuckle with the elbow or a foam roller to go deep in the tissue that's why I invented this tool to really go deep and uh, when you work on the quad area if you have a knot this tool can go deep like two to three inches deep and that's that's how we can release it and remember if you not applying mechanical force on the fascia layer or the scar tissue you will never be able to release it you have to have mechanical force that's why massage or foam roller does not get to the tissue to really exerting that mechanical force to cause physiological change okay so to sum it up what you should do at home first if you are in an acute stage is stop what you what causing the pain the jumping the the kneeling the squatting five to seven days should be good enough to really get the minor inflammation mild inflammation under control but if you have moderate to severe inflammation and your body going back and forth between the inflammation and the proliferation stage you need to be aggressive of breaking this vicious cycle from both end uh, inflammation and the proliferation the other thing you can do if you kneeling a lot i recommend to stop doing that but if you have to get a knee pad that will avoid too much rubbing on the patella tendon so to work on this issue i would personally use the magna Hill one the anti-inflammatory diet to restore deficiency and simultaneously using the tools to break the scar tissue the fascia restriction and release the trigger points and right after that we can do the exercises we cannot do the exercise while you have all this issue because exercise is going to cause more inflammation going to cause more scar tissue if you introduce it in wrong time so if you have any question leave it in the comment section below and i will answer it in a future video we'll see you soon make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain if you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below or go to asterinstitute.com.